Hi, today we'll be talking about the second group of neurology approaches. We'll be talking about visual disturbances, tremors, hyperkinesis, paresthesia, and amnesia. In terms of visual disturbances, there are three big groups. The first is that of monocular visual loss or impairment, the second is diplopia, and the third is visual field defects. In terms of monocular visual loss or impairment, this occurs in pathologies affecting the um, optic nerve, optic disc, retina, and the eye in itself. Uh, causes can be classified into painful and painless. Of note, painful causes would include that of optic neuritis uh, and glaucoma. So these are some of the common causes that appear in the PACES exam. Ischemic optic neuropathy, often in the context of giant cell arthritis. Although in patients with cardiovascular risk factors, we can also get a non arteritic ischemic optic neuropathy. Optic neuritis, uh, multiple sclerosis is probably the, uh, one of the commoner causes of optic neuritis. Um, although other conditions uh, such as inflammatory disorders like uh, lupus, drugs like ethambutol uh, can also cause optic neuritis. In terms of the retinal uh, artery occlusions, it's important to think of it in terms of thrombotic, embolic, or arteritic. Arteritic uh, meaning vasculitic disorders. Uh, and for the CRVO, the vein occlusions, uh, they are usually uh, in pro-thrombotic hypercoagulable states. Um, so often for CRAO and uh, CRVOs, uh, these may be patients with uh, underlying uh, thrombotic risk factors. So it's important to think of hypercoagulable states, um, such as patients with uh, congenital coagulopathies, antiphospholipid syndrome, um, hyperviscosity syndromes in hematological malignancies or underlying malignancies. Uh, retinitis pigmentosa is an important condition to study for the PACER Station 5 exam, and the vision loss can be um, binocular given that it can be fairly chronic. Next, moving on to diplopia. Um, this is often, uh, there's an approach to ophthalmoplegia for the neurology short case, but in terms of the Station 5 exam, I would say that myasthenia and thyroid eye disease would be the commoner two cases and progressive supranuclear palsy as a possibility. In terms of visual field defects, we think of it in terms of whether it's chiasmal or retrochiasmal. For chiasmal, we normally think of it in terms of pituitary uh, disorders, uh, some form of pituitary tumor that may be functional. So um, in patients with acromegaly, Cushing's, uh, one may think uh, of, of these conditions. And uh, retrochiasmal problems can either be some form of clot, like in cerebrovenous sinus thrombosis, or a bleed. So in patients who may be predisposed to such conditions. Uh, this table uh, basically includes the different causes in a bit more detail, um, and I'll leave it to you to uh, read on your own. So next, we move on to tremors and hyperkinesis. Um, I tried to break it down into something a bit simpler and digestible. I think of um, the common uh, groups first, so Parkinsonism and chorea. For Parkinsonism, I think of it in terms of primary Parkinson's disease, uh, Parkinson's plus, which traditionally we think of it in terms of uh, cortical basal degeneration, multisystem atrophy, and progressive supranuclear palsy. So we look for any um, ophthalmoplegia for PSP, um, any autonomic or pyramidal or cerebellar features in multisystem atrophy and uh, any, um, any alien limb syndrome uh, or other associated features uh, in cortical basal degeneration. And secondary causes would include uh, any form of CNS pathology that affects the basal ganglia, strokes, uh, trauma, etc. Um, Korea, I came out with this mnemonic called SHOPS. Um, S for Sydenham's Korea and rheumatic fever, uh, H for Huntington's or hyperglycemia. O for OCP, P for polycythemia rubavera, and S for systemic lupus erythematosus. Now I would say that Sydenham and uh, Huntington's would probably be the commoner too, and it would be worthwhile reading around these topics. The next condition with Wilson's disease that can manifest in almost any uh, neurological form, from hyperkinesis, tremors, um, cognitive impairment, and so on. Uh, it is important to then uh, look for hepatic involvement in these patients. Endocrinopathies like hyperthyroidism and pheochromocytoma can cause tremors, and hypoglycemia can cause some form of shaking that can be perceived as tremors. Drugs are an important cause 
uh, drugs that cause tremors would include beta agonists, phenytoin, lithium, um, some of the calcineurin inhibitors. Um, and some drugs cause extra pyramidal side effects. So these patients uh, may, may taking anticonvulsants or neuroleptics or even metoclopramide uh, may come in with dystonic reactions. And systemic disease like um, pulmonary CO2 retention, uh, liver disease and kidney disease uh, can manifest as asterixis which may be seen as a tremor, but I would say that this is much less common. Hence, in terms of priority, I would say that the top moving down would be um, a decremental order of priority. So these are the causes of tremors. You can think of it in terms of congenital, acquired, and systemic diseases. And uh, these are some of the causes of hyperkinesis. So the first slide is probably a more summarized, uh, broken down version um, to, to commit to memory. Um, it might be worthwhile thinking about how to differentiate chorea from acetosis from dystonia and the definitions are stated here. So next we move on to paresthesia. I think for paresthesia, the main take home is to think that uh, there are neurological causes, which normally would be some form of nerve uh, involvement. Uh, and secondly, would be systemic, uh, in particular, hypocalcemia. So for the um, nerve causes, typically it would be uh, either a sensory predominant uh, peripheral neuropathy, or um, mononeuritis multiplex is so also something to think about. The three big groups of mononeuritis multiplex would be vasculitic disorders, rheumatological disorders, and paraneoplastic um, carcinomatosis. Uh, in terms of hypocalcemia, um, this is a topic that um, I'm not uh, the best at, so, um, but this slide uh, gives an, some categories to think about this uh, condition. I would think in terms of the, it's not very common in the PACES exam, but it may be something worthwhile uh, revising. I would say that the big groups would be uh, the hypoparathyroidism that can be either iatrogenic, autoimmune, infiltrative. So you can see some infiltrative disorders like chemochromatosis, bosons, uh, that may be um, PACES uh, worthy in some sense. Um, PTH resistance is associated with this condition called uh, Albright's hereditary osteodystrophy. So you can Google it to see some of the characteristic features and some systemic disorders and medications to be um, associated with hypocalcemia. Amnesia and cognitive impairment, uh, once again, is not a common station 5, but may possibly feature in the station 2 exam. The way I think of it uh, is in three, three or four big groups. Number one would be primary dementias. So um, knowing the characteristic features of each. Um, the second would be neurological disorder. So any form of neurological insult um, can cause some form of cognitive impairment if it affects the, uh, the, the um, cortical areas. Uh, but of note, uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus is something to think about, especially if there are skate problems or urinary incontinence. And systemic diseases uh, of various sorts, uh, be endocrinopathies, um, metabolic deficiencies, uh, medications as well are uh, common culprits for amnesia or cognitive impairment. Um, and not to forget psychological disorders like depression. So um, it would be important to, to, have, um, to, to consider these big groups when one uh, studies for the approach of uh, cognitive impairment and amnesia. Thank you.